everybody, it's Amy from Winterwood Studio and today we're talking about the 10 worst pieces of artistic advice or advice for artists that there are floating around out there. I think I've heard probably almost all of them at one point or another. We're going to talk about them today and we're going to talk about why they are terrible advice to follow and yeah, we'll have a nice little chat. So come on in and let's chat for a little bit. Okay, so today we're talking about the 10 worst pieces of advice that artists get. <laughs> uh, we're going to start off with number one, which is one that I heard when I was pretty young and <laughs> it had a profoundly negative effect on me. And that is that art only has value if it is realistic, representational art. And, you know, I'm a little bit older. I know nowadays, like, that's not so much the thing. Now it's more abstract is a bigger thing. But when I was a kid back in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was more about representational art um, and, you know, realistic art. Uh, and I do work in a very realistic style, uh, but I think it might in large part be because from an early age I was told that art has no value unless it's really realistic, uh, which is clearly absolutely wildly not true. Um, and like if I look at some of my fam favorite artists like Klimt and um, Van Gogh and uh, Mary Cassatt, well hers are kind of representational, but you know, I like a little bit of that more looser impressionistic style. Um, and I was told, like I said, from a young age that that's not okay. <laughs> or not art, or not good, not good art. I was told it was not good art. To have it be good art, it had to be really realistic. So that was probably, I think, looking at my list here, the biggest one, I think, that that impacted me the most. So that's number one. <laughs> number two, you're not a good artist if you draw from a reference. Okay, come on, guys. Why is this still a thing? I still see this on, like, Instagram and social media all the time that if you're using a reference you're not a <laughs> not a good artist no guys come on no <laughs> if you want to draw a fox you don't want the elbows all sticking out you need to know the anatomy of a fox <laughs> how do you learn the anatomy of a fox by studying photos of a fox <laughs> and by drawing photos of a fox I mean, that, it's great if you can draw from imagination and have everything be super realistic and beautiful. Um, and again, I'm not talking about abstract art here. Nope. That's all from your imagination. You don't need reference pictures for that. That's, I'm not talking to you guys. I'm talking to everybody else. If you want to draw a beautiful lady with long flowing hair in a field in a pre-Raphaelite style, you're going to have to look at at something unless you have, and this is, I think, why people say that, unless you have had years and years and years and years and years and years of experience drawing from, you know, real life, life studies, life drawing classes, reference photos, being outside and painting in plain air. I mean, that's all references. It is. You can call it what you want, but you're drawing from a reference, guys. And the only reason that some artists can draw without a reference is because they didn't start out that way. <laughs> they started drawing with references. I don't know any artist at all who hasn't worked from references. And most, in fact, I think almost everybody I know that are artists still work from references. It doesn't matter if you're outside painting in plain air, you're working from life, a real reference right in front of you. <laughs> so yeah. I, I have a big pet, pet peeve with that one. You absolutely are an artist if you are working from a reference. Bad advice number three, beginner artists should use beginner materials. Again, no guys, no. If you wanna learn watercolor and you go get the cheapest pad of watercolor paper you can find at you know the grocery store and a pack of you know kid watercolors, do you think you're going to be able to learn all the beautiful techniques that you see professional watercolor artists using? You might not even be able to learn them with student grade watercolors and paper. I myself had to switch to Arches paper before I could learn the techniques that I wanted to learn. You may have to invest in better materials, but you have to look at it this way. If you want to be an artist, 
and you want to like put in the time to learn and practice, wouldn't you like that practicing and learning to go as smoothly as possible and as quickly as possible so you can move on to creating the professional art that you want to make? It's you are going to struggle and it's going to take you a hundred times longer to learn what you want to learn if you're not using quality material. That being said, you can find quality material that is good enough to learn on that is not at the sky high prices of say the arches paper that I mentioned. There are other things out there to learn from. Um, my journey was stunted a little bit because I live in an area where there aren't art stores and I just had to pick and choose um, and I saw an artist using arches paper and I finally just broke down and bought some. I didn't know any of the other brands. I just bought that one because I saw an artist using it and the world opened up for me and everything became so much easier. It definitely matters what the quality of your materials are. I've struggled with um, inferior acrylic paints a lot as well. Watercolor and acrylics were really a struggle till I invested in better materials. Advice number four, you'll never make money with your art or you'll never make money as an artist. You will be a starving artist. That's not true guys. Not in this day and age, not in this highly connected social media world. It's a job and you can definitely make money with it if you're willing to put in the time and effort that it takes. It is if you it is a job, you'll have to treat it as a job. I had no idea how much work a YouTube channel would be until I started one and it is a ton of work. I'm working more hours than I ever did at my day job back before, but it is worth it and this is what I love doing and it's what I want to do and I am happy every day I get to get up and, and do it. Um, but yeah, you have to be your own marketer and your own self-promotion person and you have to handle all the business aspects of it and you have to be business savvy and you need to know what you're doing. Um, but if you're willing to put in the work to learn that, there is absolutely no reason why you cannot make money with your art in this day and age. That is an old myth that has not been applicable since the early 2000s. Bad advice number five, you aren't a real artist if you didn't go to art school. That's that's just the load of, you know what, that's not true. Uh, you can be a self-taught artist. Again, in this hyper-connected world, you can learn anything, study anything. You know, the resources are out there way more than they ever used to be. When I was, you know, I'm dating myself, but in my late teens, in the late 90s, none of this stuff was out there. Like, if you wanted to learn art, yeah, you probably had to take an art class or buy a bunch of books or find a library that had the books that you wanted and those were really your only two options. That's not how it is now. There's a world of inf information just available at your fingertips night and day whenever you want it. Look for artists on YouTube that have educational content. Look for online classes that you can take. Read books from the library. Read, you know, there's Kindle Unlimited books for people with an Amazon Kindle Unlimited subscription. There's just endless resources now. Patreon, artists, Patreons who teach you, teach you their techniques. It's just a whole world of information out there. You do not need to go to art school. It's great if you want to go and yeah, I'm sure the degree still holds some, you know, clout <laughs> in the business world, but it depends on what you want to do. Do you want to like go into animation and work for Disney? Maybe you might need a degree for that. Do you want to sell your art and have a YouTube channel and a social media presence and build up a following? Do you need a degree for that? I don't have one. I'm doing it. If I can do it, you can do it, guys. You don't need to go to art school to be an artist. You do, however, have to be willing to put in the time to study art and learn what you're doing and make good art. Okay, this one's another one that's one of my pet peeves. You're not really an artist. Oh, number six. You're not really an artist if you aren't making your full-time living from it. You can't call yourself an artist unless you're making money from it. That's not true either. Are you drawing every day? Are you painting on a regular basis? You're an artist. You're an artist if you're creating art on a regular basis. That's it. That's the whole definition. Nothing else. If you're creating art on a regular basis, you're an artist and you can call yourself one. You don't need anybody's permission. There, problem solved. That one was easy. <laughs> okay, this is another one too that bothers me. Number seven, artists are born not made or the other version would be, you have to be born with talent, you can't learn it. None of that's true. Don't believe a word of it. You can learn whatever you wanna learn and if you're willing to put in the hours of practice to get good at it, you can be and do whatever you wanna be. That's another easy one. That is absolutely 100% not true. Not true. 
These are all kind of upsetting for me. All right, number eight. Blank isn't real art. Fill in the blank. Anime isn't real art. Manga isn't real art. Impressionism isn't real art. Abstract art isn't real art. Whatever you want to fill it in with, it's all total you know what, guys. That is not true. It's all art. It's all art. If it's creating emotions and you're creating it and it doesn't matter if it's paint or collage or pen and ink or whatever you're doing, it's art. It's art. And anybody who says otherwise is wrong. So just don't listen. You don't need to listen. You guys, you don't need to listen to everybody who tells you anything. I don't know. I don't know. These are irritating me. Just going through all of them are irritating me. Okay, number nine. You have to wait for inspiration to create a piece of art that is worthwhile. Absolutely not, guys. No, if you wait for inspiration, it's never going to find you. It's like that. I can't ever remember that quote. It's by a writer. And they said they make sure that inspiration always finds them at their desk at 9 a.m. every morning. Um, yeah. Button seat. That's another writer one. Uh, inspiration can't find you if you're not working. That's my motto. If you're not feeling inspired, doesn't matter. Do something anyway. Just randomly pick something and start drawing and painting. It's not about being inspired. It's about creating stuff. And at the end of the day, if you have a blank canvas, it's a blank canvas. There's, you didn't create anything. If you go through all of my finished pieces, like I can't even tell you anymore now which ones like I was really inspired to do and flowed easily and which one felt like pulling teeth, but I know there were some. I know that there were a lot of them where I felt absolutely uninspired and I just randomly picked something and I did it because I knew it was important to just keep up with the daily practice and I did it. And I, looking back now, I can't tell you which ones were inspired and which ones were pulling teeth pieces of work. Most people won't be able to tell. Sometimes you just need to put your butt in the chair or, you know, your feet at the easel and do your work. <laughs> All right, number 10. This one for sure is one I've gotten a lot, and that's you need to pick one medium and stick with it. Yeah, I don't do that. If you follow me here, you know I don't do not do that. I work in tons of different mediums, and if I didn't, I would get bored, and I would not be creating art anymore. <laughs> I think it's really important to stay inspired and passionate and excited about art, and for me that means hopping around from medium to medium, and if somebody doesn't like it, too bad. This is my journey, not theirs, so sorry. <laughs> so yeah, those are the 10 worst pieces of art advice that I have ever heard. If I miss one of your favorites or, you know, your least favorites and you want to vent about it, make sure you put it down in the comments below because I'm sure I missed some or maybe you got something that was really horrendous that you think I'd like to hear about. We can laugh over it now. Just remember not to take it to heart, right? You know, a lot of people don't know what they're talking about, guys. They just don't. <laughs> and a lot of people think they do know what they're talking about when really they don't. <laughs> I don't know what to say about life. It's something. Anyway, share some of yours down in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. Anyway, if you'd like to join me over on Patreon, we have a really nice little group over there now. Um, my Everything's like $4 right now. Uh, it's my sketchbook club tier and I do a monthly theme and then we create art or sketches or whatever based on the three weekly prompts that I put up and then we share them in our discord group. I do have a Facebook group. It's not very active. The discord group is very active however and it is a ton of fun and very inspiring and it's a great place to make friends. I've made a ton of new friends over there. If you'd like to come join us over there we'd love to see you. It's only $4 a month um, and I'm also providing that tier here with four nature inspired reference photos taken by me each month that you can use copyright free in your work as well as the occasional um, exclusive tutorial over there. So if you'd like to join us over there we'd love to have you. If you haven't hit the like and subscribe button yet I would very much appreciate it if you would. Every like and subscribe tells YouTube that this is quality content and it helps push my videos up a little bit higher in the algorithm which means more people get to see my videos. So thank you for being here with me today and until next time, happy creating!